Hello creative friends, I hope you're doing well. So as you can see, this video is a tiny bit different than my usual format because I have a special guest. Oops, oh. I'm so sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm so no, I'm sorry. Hi, that's my lovely daughter, Steph. <laughs> and um, as she said hello already, I'm just reading the script. So the script says hello. So she said hello. Now it's my Hel time. Hello. Hello, exclamation mark. We nailed it. So a few weeks ago, Steph came to me and said, wouldn't it be fun if you could do like a series of videos on DIY, holiday, gift ideas, slash decorating ideas? And I thought, yes, that would be fun. One of the things that's really popular these days is painting on ceramic, uh, not, they're not ceramic, right? They're terracotta. clay. Terracotta. Terracotta pots. We thought it could be like a fairly inexpensive gift to give to someone at Christmas. And it's uh, going to be also a handmade gift, which is always a big plus. So what we did is, <laughs> with the best intentions, we set up, we reconfigured the studio last week and we started filming and the filming was, oh, what's, <laughs> I was going to say wonky, but it was really oh, garbage. Yeah, it was really bad. Uh, the camera that we're using, usually I'm using it for an overhead shot, but we didn't have that installation. And then we were using our phones on the side, that didn't work. So what we ended up doing is re-filming uh, us painting the pods, but uh, at different times, like she filmed hers and I filmed mine. And this is what you're going to see on the screen next while we answer some questions because I did ask you guys if you had any questions for us. So we're going to do that now. Um, we ended up painting two pots each. One was really successful. <laughs> the for other both one, of us. For both of us. <laughs> the other one, I think yours is still way better than mine. Uh, mine just ended up being a white pot. Uh, before it, <laughs> before After it was she covered it with layers and layers of gesso. Okay, so the first questions come. The first question comes from uh, Margaret Reed, and this was from Instagram. She was asking, "Do you work with gouache?" I am just starting to experiment with gouache. I have pulled them out maybe three years ago. I want to say, I did a face painting in my sketchbook. It was fine, it was acrylic gouache. Uh, there are two types of gouache, I'll we'll come back to that later. But uh, I really started liking the medium recently. Do, do you have any experience with gouache? <laughs> I have, I wanna say three complete sets of gouache at home. Oh. I have not opened them. Oh, you didn't? I impulsively bought one after watching a lot of YouTube videos and then another one for an art project in school mm. that I never used. I think I used it once. Mm -hmm. I want to say once. But it's a, such a great medium, I find, because it's very versatile. It's, yeah. it's kind of like halfway between watercolor and acrylic, okay. so it's quite opaque. I love the fact that it dries flat, which yeah. I think is a beautiful quality. I'm not a big fan of glossy paint. Mm -hmm. I used to, but I don't anymore. Like the high brands, like the high quality brands out there, they dry very glossy, which, Mm, not my favorite thing. It's simply the better. Mm. Long story short, I would like to use gouache and I hopefully will during my Christmas break. So we might see some more art. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Paper and pen days asks, what or who inspires your art? That's a, I find it's a tough question to answer. Yeah, I mean, pretty much I, anything, right? I don't, and this is something we talk about a lot. I don't usually create from nothing. Um, I'm very much a, I don't want to say a reproducer in what no, I do, but I like looking at a thing and then drawing the thing. So and you then use I'll reference. Add, yeah, a lot of reference. I don't, like if you sit me down with a blank piece of paper and tell me to draw something, I'm, nothing will come out. Mm. Um, and that's fine. Yeah. I don't sell my art, so that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I guess just pretty things on the internet. This is where we're really, really different because I, for me, find um, using reference is really new to me. I can reproduce stuff, but it almost challenges me in a way that if I can't reproduce something exactly the way it is on the photo, I might get upset. 
and usually I don't like to have boundaries when I create. So usually I will start painting very intuitively. Sometimes as it develops, I will use reference. Not that often though. However, this is the best way to learn though. Using reference is the best way to develop your art. So I am trying to get better at it, but uh, yeah, we're ve like very much the opposite. I just realized that. I don't know why, because yeah. I know her. <laughs> but anyways. But we like to draw the same things, which is funny. Like yeah. we like florals. Yeah. We like nature. Nature. We like landscapes. portraits. Yeah, that's true. Landscapes. I think the one thing that you probably don't enjoy as much is cityscape. No, it confuses me. Yeah. There's too many lines, and if they're not straight, I get upset. <laughs> Your graphic design background? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next question. I want to know why you quit using your large watercolor palettes. Uh, did you get rid of them? And if so, why? So at the beginning of my watercolor journey, I was probably like everybody who's super enthusiastic about having discovered a new medium and watching a whole bunch of videos and getting inspired by the colors. And I bought a few. A lot of them were given to me, however. <laughs> Uh, so that resulted in having four, well, I have them right here. I can show them very quickly, but they are palettes or palette cases that I have removed the tracks inside. If I can get that open. And so as you can see, they're quite full. Whoa. Uh, I can't remember how many I've got in there. It's five by, I don't know how many rows. And so they're divided by, you know, yellows and reds and pinks and then so on. I've got the neutrals, the metallics. However, having a palette like this, and at some point I have them all laid out on my work table whenever I was working. And what I found was I was always using the same colors and also having too many choices. That was not good. It was, it was really a creative blockage. I know it sounds weird, but uh, since I've reduced my palette to one single palette, you just need your primary in a cool format and your primary in a warm tone. And I'm pretty sure it's the same with painting or any kind of mediums. You know what's funny, though? What? You just talked about how you hate boundaries and being constricted. And now yeah. You're like, but the colors. Yeah. You know. That's true, though. It's, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. I know, but I think I'm also the person that if I have too many choices of tools, um, I don't know which one to pick. Whereas if I have to deal with just one blank page, I know I have to do something. Like It's just like, okay, dip your brush in the paint and just start somewhere. Wow, that's a good observation. We all like boundaries. Yeah, that's true. That's no, true. I also just use primary colors. If I do paint, I have like six tubes of paint that I actually use yeah. and I just mix my own because I really like mixing colors. It's yeah, which so fun. It is fun. I'm starting to like that better and better, uh, which is again, comes back to the point where you don't need a whole bunch of colors. You can, I, you can even do all the colors of the spectrum, the spectrum oh, with yeah. three colors and a white well, and black. Yeah, five, I guess. Four. And then a, a neutral maybe. I would say though, if you're doing like Let's say you're mass producing something like the little clay pins that I want to do at some mm -hmm. point. If you plan on redoing the same ones over and over, sure, it's worth it to buy one color or make a giant quantity and store it. But that's pretty much the only time I would consider buying a gajillion colors. Yeah. Just to answer the last part of your question, JC, no, I have not get, gotten rid of any. <laughs> I still have all my palettes. Sometimes I swap one color for another. Well, I, we've gotten two questions kind of similar. Melissa also asked about Christmas in our province in Quebec. Uh, the other one is what is a typical Christmas Eve and Christmas day for you and your family? Favorite traditions, holiday foods, decorations? I don't know. It's different now. It's it different. We used to, when I was a little kid, we used to uh, travel to go see family in Toronto a lot. And then we would have like your typical giant dinner on the 24th. And then all the kids come downstairs to all of the toys on the 25th. And I'm sure that the evening of the 24th, there was a lot of drinking and wrapping presents <laughs> with the adults. I wasn't privy <clears> to. <throat> they had a different tradition. Yeah, it was more of a, yeah. uh, the English side. I come from a French background, so... For me, when I grew up, it was the 24th of December at midnight. We wake up the kids, we unwrap the gifts, we go to bed super late because there's way too much food to eat. 
And then the next day, it was just play with your toys. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of fun. And be very tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. I mean, the next day was like all the, you know. Chocolate for breakfast. Yes. Chocolate for lunch. Chips for dinner. But then a few years ago, uh, I kind of flipped it around. We decided no gifts for Christmas. Remember when we adopted the open door policy? Yeah. That was a lot of fun. I decided that Christmas would be more of a tradition of, um, you know, seeing the people that you love and less about giving gifts because we pretty much buy each other stuff that we want like throughout the year and the mad, the crazy dash to the shops. I hate that. I hate shopping, period. And this was also back when online shopping wasn't as like popular. It was a thing, but it wasn't a an yeah. easy thing yeah it's true especially and if you wanted to support local which yeah good luck yeah what we wanted to do was see the people that we love our friends our family so basically we said to everybody look for a week we're gonna be home if you want to drop by and have a glass of wine chat have some food you're more than welcome so it, it just became like basically food food is our tradition so, <laughs> that's a good point food is it uh we're big foodies we're not turkey is, people. No, we're not turkey people. Steph is an amazing uh, cook. Um, I used to do it, and now I don't enjoy it as much because I live on my own. So Steph cooks for me, <laughs> which is it's fun. fantastic. I like cooking. I love it. So yeah, Chris is more about like seeing friends and seeing the people that we love, and just like not plan anything. I think would be the biggest thing that I could, the biggest way that I could sum everything up is not having anything super planned. Uh, just being with each other and tell funny stories and eating a lot of food. No stress. No, yes. Next question. I am new. Love copying your cards. Thank you. <laughs> How to prevent 140 pound paper from curling a bit. I did address this issue a little bit in one of my videos and I will link it below. Uh, basically, there are different ways that you can do it. So I will put that uh, in the description so that you can uh, view the video and see how I did it. But... I might have to add that watercolor will warp anyways. Uh, it's just a matter of letting it rest, maybe weigh it down once you're done painting. But there's ways to minimize the warping while you're working and this video will address that question. All right, next question. What is your best ideas for organizing a studio? The, there's a general tip that talks about never touching the same piece of paper twice. Hmm. Uh, basically just like make it so that everything you do is efficient so instead of you know you take your bill out of the mailbox you put your bill on the table then you come back you put your bill in a sorting tray then you come back you put your sorting tray here like make it so that your system is like you come in and you sort it right away and just make everything efficient efficiency is key yeah be more intentional as to where you yeah. We'll store a thing. I mean, store it to its final destination kind of thing. Function over aesthetics and then make it pretty. Mm, that's a good tip. I guess it could be true for a lot of things in the studio. Um, my big tip would be if you are a person that uses different media, like have dedicated, if possible, because I know not everybody has like a big studio, um, but make it functional so that if you're sitting down to do watercolor uh, painting, then you have like a designated drawer or a box. It could be anything with all your watercolor supplies. And then if you're also into um, knitting, uh, you can have like a dedicated basket for knitting. So each medium would be together. And that way, if you're looking for something, you don't have to rummage through multiple drawers. You know where the acrylic stuff is and you know where the, so section, mm -hmm. sectionize, sectionize, sectionize. That's a new word. I think the biggest challenge with organizing is to keep it organized. And that comes back to your point, yeah. which is when you move stuff around, put it back in its rightful place mm -hmm. or, you know. It's, or it's, sometimes it's a question of buying duplicates, which I know is kind of wasteful, but if it's going to help keep you organized, oh. you know what I mean? Like someone was saying, you know, if, if you have two sinks in the bathroom and only mm. one garbage and someone has a tendency to like keep things until they get to the garbage, two garbage. That's true. I think it depends on what kind of person you are. Yeah. Somebody asks about watercolor pencils. 
I have experienced uneven coverage results. What can I do to remedy this? Nothing. <laughs> so Not that we know. Watercolor pencils is a tool that I use once in a blue moon and only to sketch because you will get uneven coverage. It's the nature of watercolor pencils. It just glides over the bumpy part or the texture of the watercolor paper, and it's very difficult to dilute and make it sink into the valleys, because, you know, different valleys. Out of curiosity, mm -hmm. does cross-hatching help? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as far as tips are concerned, that's the nature of the beast, basically. So I would recommend, if you don't like the streaking, of watercolor pencils, um, buy watercolor paints maybe. And or lean into the streak. Yeah, embrace the streaking. That sounds funny. Naked people. <laughs> <laughs> I know. All right, next question. Uh, where did I get my training? I am self-taught. That's all I can tell you. I trained by mistakes. I make a lot of mistakes. No, but they do help. Yeah. That's the best way to, to to figure things out is to make mistakes and then try to get out of those mistakes. And if you can't, you just move on. Um, and cover it with gesso. And cover it with gesso. <laughs> That's funny. I don't use gesso anymore, though. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, no, no. Mom. This was... <laughs> that was my first pot. <laughs> Face your shame. Sorry. It's all bumpy, too, because there's some streaking that happened and then I went over it and over it. The streaking is back. I know, the streaking is back. Yeah. Okay, uh, somebody wants to know the difference between gouache and watercolor. Basically, opacity. Yeah, there are two types of gouache. There's acrylic gouache and watercolor gouache, which we usually call regular gouache. Uh, acrylic, or, oh, acrylic. acrylic gouache is permanent when once it's dry whereas designer gouache there's different brands that make it and they call it a different name but watercolor gouache designer gouache professional gouache these will be reactivatable <laughs> reactivatable <laughs> you can read <laughs> she's laughing at me i put the emphasis on the wrong syllable <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you can always reactivate it with water. So that is the main difference. And the big difference, like Steph said, is the opacity. So typically gouache is opaque unless you add a lot of water and you can mm. get like the translucency that you want. So somebody asked, what's my favorite color in my palette? I'm going to flip this around and say, what is your favorite color in terms of art? Like, you know, a color combination or just color? Okay, both. Pick one color and then pick a color combo. <laughs> right now, mm. I love a good forest green. Mm -hmm. like a really dark, moody green. Uh, anything that looks like fall really would be the combination. So like rust and then some navy. And then if I'm feeling wild, a little bit of um, like oh. ochre yellow. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mustard. Love a good mustard. Mm. Very um, fallish. Yeah, very Pinterest. <laughs> very what? Mm. Little blush. <laughs> but what's so? I guess forest green is your favorite favorite color. Yeah, out that's of that like color my palette. base, and then I would expand mm. from there. Yeah. I think mine. Do you know what my favorite color? Is? Gold. No, that's not a color. It's not a color. That's a metal. Okay, then gold your is in a color. class by itself. I know what it is. Payne's gray. Yeah. I love a good paints gray. I love a paints gray that has quite a bit of blue in it. So it's not black. It's not gray. It's not blue. It's just... I feel like if you get a gray. dog, you're going to name it Paints. <laughs> no. It's going to be mochi. Gray. Oh, yeah, mochi. No, that's mochi. your cat. That's my cat. I don't have a cat. Uh, what's my favorite color combo? I like paints gray with shell pink cream. What else do I add in the mix? blue. Well, yeah, dark blue. I forget what the, is it Prussian blue that you like? Prussian blue is is my favorite blue. Titan ti Titan buff, titanium buff. That's just white. <laughs> no, it's kind of no, it's white with a little Maybe. bit of cream in it. It's yeah. the per I like Jean Brilliant number one by Holbein. It's kind of like I know it's a yellow, but it's all it's got a lot of cream in it, and it's beautiful, and it does match well with shell pink and, and gold, 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 anything gold. 
but they know that it's not a new slash for they them know. last question for me the next one will be for Stu. so will there be a youtube video about using coloring pencils it will be so kind that's so sweet it's such a good way to ask thank you very much uh, i have done quite a few coloring pencils videos and i will also link that below but if you refer to my 12 days of christmas I did two years, I think 2016 and 2017, most of the images I colored with pencils and it was quite tedious and I enjoyed every second of it. I love color pencils. You don't. <laughs> I don't. They're so frustrating. I can't. I, but the blending which is and the silly. adding. It's silly because I like like minutia and like monotonous tasks. Like I could, I could do a pointillism drawing, no problem. Yeah. But... I don't know what it is about coloring pencils. I just don't, I don't like oh. it. So my last question is from me to Steph. And <laughs> she doesn't want to answer it. <laughs> okay, you're going on a trip. Uh -huh. And you can only bring one medium. Because you do art on a f irregular basis. One medium, what will it be? Will it be oil, acrylic, pencils? Definitely not oil. <laughs> uh, like a pen? One pen. Because you like to sketch. Well, I, I mean, the only like art draw. I really do nowadays is like filling in my bullet journal with daily doodles of what I did that day. Mm -hmm. Which so, is yeah. awesome. Just a pen. Love a, a good pen. A pen. Yeah, I love a good pen too. Like a pen could get you so a far. long way. <laughs> so, so far. I have a sketchbook and I, I sketch in it. Well, I used to sketch every day and now because of the studio move and all that, it's been derailed a bit, but uh, I'm going to pick it back bring? up. What would I bring? Where are you going? Where, where am I going? Where are you going in your dreams? Because it's COVID. We're not going anywhere. Okay. So I think I would go to Japan, actually. Mm -hmm. I, Japan has a lot of <laughs> art supply stores, but I don't know. I'm so attracted to Japan's landscape from what I've seen. Um, obviously, I've never been, but... I think I would bring a pencil just like you, just because, or a set of watercolor. Yeah, I, feel yeah, like you'd, I think. You'd be like pocket doodler and watercolor palette on the go. Oh, that's true. Yeah, but if, if you don't have a pen though, I can always doodle with a brush. Yeah, I've seen you do it. Yeah, yeah, I think my watercolor set, yeah. We're done. Cute. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Here they are. Uh, so this is the first pot that Steph painted, which is absolutely adorable. I love it. It's very Pencil. geometric. Pencil. Oh. Yeah, I hate this. So we're not going to show that. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, well, the element that attracted me to it is that unfinished uh, strand of leaves. <laughs> it's so bad. No. I just don't know why I chose to put gold but on it. But it's gold. And, like, I think it's... Instantly regretted it. Really? Well, I like the splotchies. The okay. The splotchies are fun. Yeah. They're but nice. this is... I love it. It I was a know. choice. I like it. And then while she was painting that, I did the white pot that you saw <laughs> earlier. <laughs> oh, that's a very good fetching look on you. Thank you. This was black or paints gray, I think it was. Of and course it was paints gray. <laughs> and then there were a whole bunch of colors. like Because I was using golden paint and the white would not dry. It remained so sticky and it was really, really annoying. See, the camera doesn't see my face anymore. Um, <laughs> so I got influenced by hers. Like, it's basically, it's well, you've so seen cute. it. She likes it. I like it. It's growing on me. I it's growing on me. It. You, don't, you want to what? I want to thief it. You want to. Here. Thank you so Merry much. Merry Christmas. Bye. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so, and then yesterday, Steph did another one. She didn't want to show it, but I think you should because I like it. Well, okay, the lesson I learned is uh, gouache dries a whole lot lighter than you think it will. So this green and this blue was supposed to be this green and this blue. Very different. It's true, gouache does. Uh, the lights dry darker and the darks dry lighter so wait did i s yeah all right so how do you anyway. feel about your pot do you like it yeah i do good yeah. merry christmas <laughs> yeah merry christmas 
The best gift exchange ever. DIY. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, seriously, I think this is an awesome uh, gift idea. And it was Steph's idea. So thank you, Steph, for this idea. I think this is a fairly inexpensive. Use your craft paint. Don't use artist grade paint for this. And don't use your beautiful acrylic gouache, too. <laughs> or just, your nice paint brushes. Don't I'm just do kidding. it. Yeah, no, don't do it. Just have fun. Just yeah. play around, have fun. This is a very accessible gift. It's yeah, yeah. Go nuts. Just a few mark makings, and even if you want to, like, just paint the pot white and gold. Oh, <laughs> you know, use tape to make straight lines if yes. you want. But uh, yeah. Anyways, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Thank you, Steph, for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, if you want to see more of Steph's, let us know in the comments because I really like having her here. <laughs> She's awesome. If you guys want to try making your own, feel free to upload it to all your social, Instagram, YouTube, go nuts. Tag her, Creation CC, and tag it with your, uh, our new hashtag, CCDIY. And we're going to put that at the bottom of the screen so that you, you can see the... Wait, 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 let me make it long. <laughs> As usual, I want to say a huge thank you to my awesome patrons who support my art over at Patreon, on which I have tons of videos. So if you're interested in watching more videos, um, head on over to Patreon. The link is down below. Also, uh, you probably, this was, this is actually the first time that YouTube is seeing what's in the background, but I'm in a new space. We are in a new space. And I will do a studio tour for sure. It's not going to happen before the beginning of uh, 2021. There's still a bit of work to do, but uh, I will definitely show it. So that's coming up. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Please stay safe and healthy. And I will see, see you later. Bye. <laughs> when do we stop? Never. It's a wrap. <laughs>